for group 17. Our topic is Smart Global Temperature Monitoring System. And now we will begin our presentation. So this is the background of Smart Global Temperature Monitoring System. So the system is to tracking and analyzing temperature variation across the world uh, by employing sophisticated sensor network and, and once data analytics, this system offers real-time insights into temperature trends, aiding in climate search research, disaster management, and environmental monitoring efforts. With the ability to collect and analyze vast amount of temperature from diverse geographic regions, this system fa uh, facilitates early detection of temperature anomalies help authorities and organizations respond effectively to potential threats such as heat wave, cold spells, or climate-related disaster. Now, this is our problem statement. Our problem statement is temperature monitoring are limited and it lacking of global coverage, and also it lacking of advanced prediction abilities, and it had to anticipate and respond to an emergency like forest fire or server weather. So, this is our objective to develop a smart global temperature monitoring system that can make us of existing cloud provider to monitoring the temperature and give extreme weather prediction. So we are using Amazon Web Service as a platform to provide a smart global temperature monitoring system. Uh, good day to the lecturer, Dr. Michael Chang, and my name is Janathan Arulaki R. Balasundram, and my student ID is 21072444. So now I'll be talking about the future works of our uh, weather prediction, right? So the future works, there are three mainly for now. The first one is to enhance the efficiency of data collection from IoT sensors. Okay, in order to do that, we are about to implement data aggregation techniques uh, where we can like, uh, it can be classified the uh, data. That is the, the implementation we are about to do. Second thing is to optimize data transmission protocol. In more words, in about like securing securing the data uh, from transmitting from one place to another, right? Okay, and then the second will be improve scalability and performance of DynamoDB for short storing sensor data. Okay, in uh, it, it actually like um, uh, we are about to say that uh, we we can like improve the accuracy or that data storing in DynamoDB, right? Uh, in order to do that, we can use Amazon Athena if, if the data set is extremely large, okay? And also we can implement data archival strategies. So it's like uh, uh, certain data will be shown for certain users in according to IAM, and IAM rules, okay? Then the third one will be utilize generated reports for machine learning. Uh, over here, we are about to use an AI, which is the part of machine learning. Uh, right? Um, the machine learning needs uh, needs data to to make it learn to train itself and then produce the the output as we wanted. Um, okay, and also we need to use model tuning to increase the accuracy and prediction of the machine learning. That's all for the future works. Thank you. So hi everyone. So now I'm going to start the comparison of cloud technology in different platform. So in AWS, which is the largest and mature cloud service provider with wide range of service and presence, such as the service provider like computing, uh, database, storage, uh, machine learnings, and others. And the next will be the grid in scalability scalability infrastructure for business based on demand. And it is also a vast global network of data center and mature enterprise great in security features. So for Microsoft Azure, Microsoft Azure, Azure with, which is good to integration with Microsoft product in Microsoft ecosystem for those operation that are already uh, using the Microsoft product. And it also a hybrid cloud solution, which allows on integrate on premises with the cloud service seamlessly. And it also most more focus on enterprise grid service and features to the organization. So the next will be the Google Cloud Platform, which is GCP, 
which is which in this platform is great in data analytics and machine learning service such as BigQuery, TensorFlow, and AI platform. It also support for content containerization and Kubernetes for deploy and manage containerized applications. Hello, my name is Marvin Wong, and I would like to talk about our group architecture diagram. And the topic is a smart global temperature monitoring system. Okay, so I have listed all the components used in the diagram. For the first component, the IoT core, it facilitates connectivity and management of Internet of Things devices. And whereby the devices can transmit data to the IoT core by the internet or network protocols. The second component, the AWS Lambda, allow, allows the user to generate functions to, to respond to specific situations. And the third, the third component, S3 storage, helps to helps to provide a, a, a storage for the data incoming and the fourth component dynamo db uh, fundamental data storage for real time and fast accessibility as it as the user can create tables and store the data from the iot core the fifth component athena allows the user to run queries which uh, suit the user preference and also allow for accurate data. For the sixth component, QuickSight, it allows data visualization, for example, tables, bar graphs or pie charts, and the user can, can customize their data visualization. And finally, SNS at, is, enables application services or devices to send and receive notifications and messages so the user can uh, can provide notifications on important alerts. Okay, so for the data flow of the diagram, first the distributed IoT sensors will collect data and also transmit those collected data into to the IoT core. Secondly, the Lambda uh, generates a function which reformats the raw data into separate JSON files and also allows the data transfer from IoT core into the S3 buckets. And next, the S3 data inside the buckets are recorded and, re and organized into the DynamoDB tables. And for the and next, the Lambda function from S3 to DynamoDB records the current date as a timestamp on and, and a primary key attribute. And next, the AWS Athena runs queries to retrieve data from the retrieve data for users from DynamoDB tables and to help to predict extreme weather events. Next, Lambda function obtains the data collected, uh, resulted from Athena via queries and the database name to execute and search data that matches the specific query provided. And, sex, and next, the Athena will output the, the, the data from the results from the queries into another S3 bucket and and that bucket contains all the individual data and from the individual files all all sorted into one file and finally the data from the second s3 bucket will be imported to quicksight to visualize the data and analyze it and and that is all from my part thank you Okay, now I'm going to demo about my part. 
from the IoT code to AWS Lambda to the S3 bucket. So first of all, we need to, I have created things. And after that, generate a new certificate. And in this sensor, I choose for the receive, publish, and subscribe, and also connection for the permission. And after that, create things. In here, we need to download all the certificates. And in, in this IoT code, I have uh, used this computer, computer as the demo, uh, as the IoT device. And we have uh, using the Python code to run the, uh, run the code. And we first, we need to put the search and the priority that I, we have downloaded inside the search file that is created during uh, following the AWS guideline. And after that, uh, here we are going to run the test file. The test file is is generated using the uh, in the sample and uh, uh, follow the guideline is a uh, pop sub dot uh, python and inside here I have created uh, I have created a test uh, python by using the code uh, modifying the code and after that we have run the thing and in the MQTT test client we after we subscribe we will uh, we need to subscribe to the test topic for here is using the test topic and we will receive the data so after receiving the data and also we have created the rules uh, which is s3 bucket store to store inside the s3 bucket we uh, for the SQL statement, we, we are using the select all from the test topic. And after that, we will trigger the lambda. And this lambda function is put object S3. So we will put the data insert into the lambda. And inside the lambda, you will collect it and transfer to the time sensor bucket 1, 2, 3. And inside the format V1. And inside JSON file. Okay, after that, this is our bucket. And after reload, we will get our data. We just created and this is our data. So that's all from me, thank you. So now I'm going to start the demonstration on the DynamoDB. So let's go to the DynamoDB. So we have to create a table for the DynamoDB, which we click on table and create table. And we enter the table name. And with the primary keys, which we put in ID and string. And after, after this, we just click on create table. And because I have created a uh, previously, so it will show like this. It will show like collect, collect data table. So to send the S3 bucket uh, data to the DynamoDB, we have to use the Lambda function to do the configuration. So we go to Lambda and functions. And we can create a new functions. So we choose water from sketch and the function. We can name this as S3 to Dynamo DB. And the runtime we just put in in this assignment, we uh, put in Python 3.8. And the architecture is x86-64. And we just click the create functions. And we will start to uh, provide uh, new functions in the Lambda, such as this. And once we create the functions, 
we have to add trigger in the S3 bucket. So the S3 bucket we choose, which is the bucket, temp sensor bucket, one, two, three. And following the event types with all objects and create events. And we'll just click on and acknowledge this and click that. So inside the function code, we have to put in this function, which is the lambda fun the lambda function in the code per section. So in this, so this function will retrieve all the data in S3 buckets. Uh, while the S3 buckets are uh, update the data. So all the data will be sent to the table, the normal table, correct data. And the and in the table in the table, it will give the timestamp ID. Give the timestamp ID for the table, each of the data uh, to be the primary key for the for the table. And we have to ensure that in configuration and the role name here, we click it and it will send us to the IM management. So we click the role and we see and go to our our Dynamo DB roles. So these all are the required policies in the Dynamo DB, which is the Amazon Dynamo DB who access Amazon S3 read only access. And this with the Lambda basic execution rule. And the put items and they get S3. So after all, after we have configured all the, all the, all the policies for the Lambda, we just go to the code and click on deploy. Good day to the lecturer, Dr. Michael Chang. My name is Jonathan Ananaraki Arbana syndrome, and my student ID is 2107244. Okay, uh, now I'm going to show the AVS uh, demonstration. First of all, uh, okay, uh, we need to import import the data from S3 to the DynamoDB. So we have to first of all click on the import from S3, right? And then click here, import from S3. Okay, uh, this thing we need to enter the the bucket bucket name that we want to uh, add, which is over here. And then click next. And then this is the table name that we want to create. For example, you can give the name uh, temp data. Then partition key is the primary key. Click next. The next. And then we can see the overall configuration over here. And then we should click import. Uh, to import the data which is stored in .json file in S3 to the animal DB. Right. Okay. Uh, after that, now I'm going to show in Athena. Okay. Um, the table we created in DynamoDB will not be shown in Athena until we, we configure the data source. So we have to click the data source over here and create the data source. Okay, and then choose Amazon DynamoDB and then click next. Okay, and then we, we can name it any name for the data source. For my case, I created uh, DynamoDB. 
Okay, and then we need a lambda function. So in order to do that, we need to provide the lambdas ARM link over here and then click next. Okay, for example, um, okay, and then we review this and then click create data source. After creation, creation we can see the data source name db over here and then the tables inside uh, dynamo which is collect data and temperature data right okay um and then to run the queue to create a query uh, we need to type the sql command and then we need to save over here save as and then we can engrave we can give any name over here and then after we create the query the safe query will be over here. Then okay, let's say if I wish to find the average temperature, I need to click run. Then we can see the query is successful. The average is 30. Okay, and then now let's head to Lambda function. This is the function where I uh, created the function so that it will query out from the Athena using the query ID. And executes and then send it the output to AWS. So here's the configuration import and then the query ID over here, which is more than 30 degree. That's the query ID, and then okay, this is the message to SNS. And that's it for this part. My name is Marvin Wong, and I will demonstrate my part on the quick side. So I will going to be use the S3 bucket to import. From here, I will choose the specific bucket to import. And it must have a manifest.json in order to import all the uh, files. So I have to copy the URI. And next, we go to QuickSight to, and datasets. We click on a new dataset. And from all of this uh, list, we choose the S3. And we uh, make a new name. And next, we paste the link from the manifest uh, file. Okay, so we will now import it to QuickSight. Okay, so here is the QuickSight page. And from here, we can see the data, which is the data from the data headers from our bucket. And next is the visuals, which are the representation of the data. For example, the table and pie chart. Okay, so uh, for example, we will use the table part. And we use the sensor ID along with the ID as a to as a record and the temperature and timestamp and timestamp. And here we can see the sensor ID and the record ID, also with the the timestamp of the 
the temperature taken on that on the specific date and also the corresponding temperature. And we can also add more visuals. visuals. And so let's use this as a pie chart. And timestamp as a then the temperature as a count. And from here we can see that on the day April 19, we collected 10, temp 10 different temperatures and on April 18 also 10 different temperatures from, from the sensor ID 1. OK, so we click the publish button. And and enter the name of a new dashboard. And you could also replace an existing dashboard if you have made mistakes before. OK. Once we publish the dashboard, it, it will look like this with the table and the pie chart. And if you want to see it again, we go back to the home page. And click on dashboards. And here we can see the dashboards we have created and, and also their names. And so that is it for my demonstration 